Welcome to the Nebraska Land Bank Podcast. I'm Ty. I'm David. I'm Danielle, and we're your hosts. In each episode, we'll sit down with local guests to highlight the incredible people and stories that make our community unique. From finance to sports, community events to local businesses, we've got it all covered. Join us as we dive into the heart of our community. This is the Nebraska Land Bank Podcast, always community-minded. Every voice. Every topic. Every time. So turn the volume up, settle in, and and let's let's talk talk Nebraska Land. Welcome back into the Nebraska Land Bank Podcast uh, with Ty Lucas and Danielle Remus. I'm David Fudge. Ty, things are kind of happening around North Platte and it's exciting. Oh, it is. Growing, growing, growing. I I mean, this community is in in full steam. Yeah, it's it's very, very cool. And I don't think, I mean, we all three have kind of been here for a long portion of our lives. And I don't remember, Danielle, this kind of activity uh, for a long, long time. No, definitely not. It's very exciting to see all of the new developments and businesses flourishing and retail coming into North Platte. Love it. Yeah. I don't feel like I have to travel to shop anymore. North Platte's getting a Chick-fil-A. Doesn't that put us on, the, on a different map? <laughs> Is Listen, that right? I, Ty, I think it actually does, yeah. That's like an event for my family when we go out of town every time we have to go to Chick-fil-A. Really? I love Chick-fil-A. Why would you not stop at a Chick-fil-A? Have I you, mean, I almost feel like you could... I'm like, not a fast food guy. Well, okay, I'm but, not either, but I mean, it's it's it still tastes good. The waffle I know, I, fries and I the lemonade company, are unmatched. Though. Yeah. A yeah. very cool company. So, speaking of cool companies, you've you've got somebody who you know a little bit uh, in the studio today, and I'm so I'm going to let you do the introduction here. Oh, that's perfect. Well, with us today, we've got Stuart Johnson from Samson Construction, and I'm really excited to have Stuart here today. He's got uh, roots out in our part of the state. Of course, Samson's uh, headquartered in Lincoln, Nebraska, and we're we're seeing a lot of their trucks and vehicles and equipment in town and so i'm really anxious to talk to him today about their company history and why why he's spending so much time in north platte these days but uh before we get started we're gonna have a little fun first danielle yeah i've got a great icebreaker question today so we'll go around the room to answer it and today's question is if you could witness any iconic building being constructed past or present which would it be let's start with you ty you know i'm going the golden gate bridge Oh, that's cool. Well, here's well, no, wait a minute. Is that a building? Well, it's iconic. <laughs> <laughs> it got built. It yeah, did it got get built. built. Yeah, all right, all right. Okay, right. here's my thinking. I mean, I think that's 1930s New Deal type of stuff, mm-hmm. which is interesting to me. Bridge construction has got to be a complete mess. I don't oh, even know how. You, I don't know how you build this bridge that they just built in Sutherland. Yeah. I mean, how do you build a bridge? N- nine and a half months ahead of schedule, by the way. Yeah. H- home which run. Is, which is, by the way, kudos to those folks for getting that done in that time. Yeah. I'm mind boggled by by bridges and bridge construction, and so I guess that's my pick. So why don't we go to um, let's go to Stuart next. Yeah. So I'm going to say the the Cathedral Notre Dame in Paris. Um, oh my! Visited that here a couple years ago, and it's impressive to to see what they did hundreds and thousands of years ago in Paris and throughout the, the city there. So that's going to be my boat. Love now, it. would that have like Michelangelo type art in it? Would that be, it, I'm trying to get my vision on it? It does. In, in the ceilings have murals and things that you can't hardly fathom how they got up there and did that wow. type of work, you know, in a building of that magnitude. And the size of it when you get inside and the woodwork and the marbling is just, it's all impressive. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of with Stuart. I... Like I even think to when you're reading the Bible and some of the structures or buildings that they built or like old castles, it's incredible to me. Like how did they move these huge stones without modern technology just by themselves? Like I would love to see how those things were built. Yeah. So the Roman Colosseums and things of that nature back in the day. For me, it's the state capital, Nebraska, you know. The time and era when that was built in a time that wasn't overly prosperous, it combined with not having today's modern tools, uh, to, I just I'm in awe every time I walk into that structure. How how well that's done and how closely it resembles some other structures around the country. Because some of this, there's some similar architecture with some uh, some of those sorts of things in Washington D.C. But I love that sort of thing. It's, if you haven't been there, oh, it's gorgeous. In the last few years, we're doing a significant renovation over the last seven years. So that's a. a very complimentary, thank you. It's, 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 but go see it. Certainly, the the tradespeople that are there, are amazing. That the ability that they have to to do the work the way that it was completed originally and, and bring it back to the original state is it's amazing to to be there. So, kind of a follow up on that. I mean that that would have to be a little bit. 
I don't know if gut wrenching is a little the right word, but a little bit like it makes you pause, right? Because you're putting your hands on a historic structure, and you don't want to alter that, really. Absolutely, I think, um, and I haven't been as involved in that project as, as I have in some others, but I do know that in the early stages of that, we did have concerns with where are we going to match windows that help provide better efficiency and, and maintain the same look of the building. And the mechanical system was so dated. How do we maintain occupancy within that building? And, and obviously there's hundreds of employees there that some of you may be familiar with if you've had construction, got shuffled and reshuffled. Mm-hmm. And, but to me, the, the impressive part is that those tradespeople are, willing, are able to go in there and make that building look like it looked originally today and, and those things are hard to find in any any trade that we do and, and especially the plastering and the woodwork and, and the stonework is it's just amazing what they've done there the last few years so you would have the ability to get senator jacobson's office in like the worst hvac <laughs> farthest from the bathroom high traffic area <laughs> or in like an ideal area is that I, right <laughs> i think he's mentioned that in uh, some previous <laughs> conversations that we've had okay um, so yeah <laughs> I excuse myself from that conversation. Yeah. Quickly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You you would have uh, I, I would not feel comfortable asking that question. So I'm glad you did. Yeah. Uh, I'm new enough around here. I don't know want to tread down that path. Just oh, yet. you you can tread. Yeah. <laughs> and we can arrange things. Let's chat after. Yeah. Yeah. Let's. Uh, I I like that idea. Okay. Well, can you tell us a little bit about the origins of Samson Construction and kind of its journey to becoming a key player in Nebraska's construction industry? Certainly. Um, we just celebrated our 70th year in business uh, last year, so that's a, an impressive feat. We started in 1952 in Lincoln in the garage of Morris and Evelyn Sampson. So very humble beginnings, wow. um, building cool. custom homes, and, and that's where it started. We grew very quickly in Lincoln, um, and Rod, Sam, and John – then kind of took the reins um, really up until the last 10 or 15 years. John was very active, you know, in the North Platte market. I know he's been out here some. Uh, even more recently, we're working through some development things. And and most recently, uh, Corey Sampson Vokun, John's daughter, and, and her husband, Dan, have taken taken over and, and lead us today in, in the direction that we're headed, which is throughout Nebraska, into Colorado and Wyoming, and really nationwide. We have a presence throughout the country hmm. uh, selectively with, with some owners that maybe we'll talk about later. But really our primary focus today, and, and it always has been, is, is healthcare, education, a lot of public you know, municipal type work, at least in rural Nebraska. You get to Lincoln and Omaha, we have a fair amount of opportunity to, to work on office and retail and these mixed use facilities are becoming very popular and so that is a bigger portion of our work you know in the eastern half of the state if i was over in your office and i was looking at your picture portfolio of some of the most infamous or well-known projects or complicated projects what would a few of those be so I, on a national level, we, we talked about that just briefly. We, we do a lot of work for Shield Sports. So if you've been to Lincoln, Omaha, Johnstown, um, some, some really impressive stores, and they continue to expand you know, throughout the country. And, and they're a unique owner. We have the opportunity to go with them to their new markets that they feel are going to be good for them. And, and those, that relationship has been great for us. The other kind of national work that we do consistently is for the Dormy Network, who's recently, um, we just turned over a portion of the work here just outside of Maxwell at the Grable course. That's their newest um, and only ground up course. So unique opportunity for, for the golfers out there to have a, a renowned course right here in, in the backyard. As far as within the state of Nebraska, you mentioned the Capitol is, is one on the top of my list. It's it's just an impressive building, and the work that they're doing currently and, and will continue to work is, is just amazing. We're in football season, so it can't go without. We've, we've done three different renditions to the Memorial Stadium, being West Stadium, then North, which was my first project at Sampson, so wow. a little history there. But then East Stadium um, was another project that I worked on there, and those are Anybody that's been to Memorial Stadium, it's it's an impressive building. Yeah. Um, so that NAS- North Stadium project would that be where the cap, like the suites, were added to the North Stadium, and then that whole area was redone on the North Stadium? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Correct. Wow. Same thing on the East Stadium then as well. It was. Yep. Kind of reworking those lower portions of the bowl, and then and reconfiguring and adding on up above. So impressive, you know, structurally and, and the, the engineering and architecture that went into that to get that to work. 
is is even more impressive than the ability to actually build it really in my opinion so hmm. how many people does samson employ so currently we range between kind of 340 350 employees and and that is spread out between our headquarters are in lincoln we have an office in papillion Kearney, and then johnstown colorado and most recently casper wyoming so we've had a presence in on the front range for quite a few years a little different market out there but it's been it we kind of transition here at Kearney. um we share a lot of resources and employees with those folks. In that industry, the, do you have a lot of turnover for construction workers, or is that a hard industry to recruit for? So Samson prides themselves really on, on our longevity of our employees. Um, we try to find people whose whose ethics and morals fit our standard, and, and those people tend to stick around for a long time. I think our average right now is about 10 years which we feel is really good, especially mm-hmm. in the construction industry and in other industries probably as well. We'd, we'd think that that's a, a, a really good number. As far as recruitment and retainment, uh, I think we're in the same boat as a lot of other industries right now. It's it's really hard to find quality employees that are educated and, and hardworking and ready to go to work. You know, you said something, you, you said a word earlier when you were talking about some of the clients you've worked with uh, repeatedly that, that we talk a lot about here and it's relationship. And I think the first time I remember seeing your trucks here in mass were, were, were a couple of the projects over at Great Plains Health, and you've done several for them. And it, how important is relationship in your business, um, establishing those relationships with the Shields or uh, with, with the Great Plains Health and being able to repeat that business over and over again? It's a majority of our business. Uh, 80% of our, our projects are with repeat clients. So that's a number that we work really hard to maintain. Mm-hmm. Um, Great Plains Hospital has, has been great. My first project there was the patient tower. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we've done a few projects prior to that, but smaller. Obviously, it's compare anything in North Platte outside of a few buildings that that was a, a fairly significant investment for them. Since then, we've completed numerous projects. I, I don't want to say that we haven't left, but it's been for a short sense of time that we haven't been there actively renovating or building you know, something new. You know, most recently, I guess since I've been some back in 2018, we the first project we finished was the uh, emergency department there on the mm-hmm. west side, kind of a new mm-hmm. entrance. From there, we've we've performed a, most recently a, a lab renovation there on first floor. Not a lot of people could see what's going on, but the fence was there and construction's ongoing. Obviously, the the Oak Street Medical Clinic is an impressive, you know, building that was completed last year and is is being occupied. And, and currently here right across the street, uh, I'm sure you guys get to, to witness on a daily, you can have a good view of, of the new rehab that's getting um, added on to and then renovated uh, kind of in a phase two portion once we get the addition uh, completed. But that relationship really has been with the administration and with the board has been great. They have a high level of, of trust and confidence in us to continually provide you know, top quality craftsmanship and, and work while we still allow them to function as a healthcare facility and provide top-notch care to those patients who are there to see them. So it's a unique relationship. They have a lot, a lot of trust in us to, to keep them operational, and, and it takes that relationship to be successful. It's certainly unique uh, within our industry. The relationship that we have with them is is, is certainly one of the best and, and, and probably a measure of quality that we look to have other projects get to. Yeah, cool. Well, we also have a, another little project coming down the pipe in North Platte, if you wouldn't mind to talk about that one for a little bit. I'm particularly excited about this one. <laughs> uh, so, so probably referencing the uh, the recreation yeah. um, additions and renovations uh, certainly um, needs some, some work. It's been a long time coming. I think we were at the groundbreaking. It was seven or eight years. They've been maybe longer really trying to, to get mm-hmm. this to happen. So we appreciate all the hard work that that, that took to get – to today. It's going to be a unique project. Um, we're going to need patience. It's going to be two and a half years before we're, we're hopefully out of there. But, you know, phase one is is going to be unique, not just to North Platte, but a lot of central Nebraska. That A 30,000 square foot indoor turf facility, um, there won't be too many sports that aren't able to, if they need to, to practice indoors. Along with that, the new pool, Aquatic Center, is going to go just south of the current aquatic center there um, an activity pool along with a competition pool so two great things there'll be some some activities for both those people who want to swim recreationally 
a great facility and, and a place to take kids and, and be safe and have kind of the splash pad water park type feel to it as well. That's kind of phase one, those two portions of it. Once those are complete, you know, we'll allow some time and in those two spaces will be occupied and, and utilized. At that time, we'll go in and we'll take over the current pool. That structure will go away completely. A new gymnasium will infill that space that's currently occupied by the pool with an indoor upper level like walking, running, track, some fitness space, new locker rooms will be incorporated in that kind of completion of phase two. And then finally, phase three, the existing gym there on kind of the northwest side, we'll get some light renovation and some some touch-ups on the offices and restrooms that are kind of there on the north side. But that uh, they do plan to remain occupied for the entire duration. So it will take some patience. It'll be unique. I'm sure there'll be some challenges, but uh, we've we've started to really work through those in detail with the city, and I think everybody's confident that that it'll be a good a good fit. Well, I know there's a general level of excitement. Uh, I, I attended the groundbreaking that you referenced a little bit ago, and I know you were there because you had a shovel in your hand, which was kind of yeah. cool. Well, it's funny just to stop there for a minute. There were three or four reasons that I decided to run for city council like seven years ago. Right. And number one was that I was sick of our town not investing in a rec center. And yeah. that was one of the top three or four reasons. And so it's kind of a surreal day, you know, for so many people yeah. in the community that have worked for so many years to to kind of shut up the naysayers and push it forward. And so I think uh, there were there were 100 people, Danielle included, um, you know, there's probably 100 people in that crowd who had exerted significant hours of effort over yeah. the years. It's a pretty exciting day. Yeah. yeah. The amount of and I don't want to get into all the politics behind it, but the, the amount of work that went into just getting that to a place where the public could have their say was remarkable. Um, and so kudos to those folks. And, and I know uh, they know who they are, and I don't want to call a bunch of people out here, but they, they I mean, that was a fantastic effort. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, it was a long time coming. You know, the, the best thing about us being a little behind the eight ball on it is we're going to have something that's modern and special. And, you know, sometimes... Sometimes things work out for a reason, and again, I would have liked to have seen this moving forward 10 years ago, but what we're going to have with modern technology, design, construction techniques is going to be going to be really special when it's all said and done. Yeah, I think you're right. Now, I did kind of jump over Stuart's background individually when we were doing an introduction, so I want to swing back to that if that's okay. Yeah, that so Stuart's got some roots in our area, and so you need to tell us a little bit about you, your role at Samson, your history to our area, that type of thing. Absolutely. So uh, originally kind of from the Kearney area, graduated Kearney Catholic, um, old rivalry there, but, <laughs> but uh, we'll leave it there. Um, <laughs> my wife and I, um, when she graduated, we, we spent a few years in Alaska and actually thought we'd never leave um, until we both had the opportunity to come back to Kearney and, and we couldn't pass up that opportunity. So in doing that, I was, I was brought on as vice president uh, of our Western Nebraska operations or central western nebraska operations and and have family uh we do ranch here just south of brady so have ties back to the community through that and, and i think that is a unique there's personally i, I have things here that that i want to make happen and i want to see through that that happen within the community of north platte you know because of that and and so that's maybe unique that i, I don't want to to take away from the work that we do in other communities, but certainly North Platte is a special place for me because of that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's it's been great. We've we've had exceptional growth um, in the last five years since we've been back. Much of that in part to to the community of North Platte, and it's been consistent. I think you know going back a few years, North Platte's always been a really good place for us. I think it started before the school, but the new high school was about a decade before. Um, the new patient tower, right? And so that, that school, the investment that the community made in building that school, I think, kind of set the stage for all these other projects. And so you look a decade down the road and we put an investment into a healthcare facility that's that reaches far beyond Lincoln County. And, and I know there's folks from hundreds of miles that come here to get, you know, really high quality care. And now here we are a decade later in, in the city, in the community, a lot of private industries and businesses are making investments into their businesses in North Platte. So I think all of those things combined are really what it's going to take to recruit young people to come back to these communities. And whether that be Kearney or North Platte or, or McCook, I think we all have the same struggles and it's recruiting young people to come back. And unique to North Platte, I think 
they have those things like a rec center where you can take young kids and 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 get some fitness in at the same time without those facilities it's it's going to be really hard um i was just in the school last week and and it still looks great yeah Um, looks brand new yeah yeah, i i think you know with the increased industry and and business and all the things going on i i suspect there's probably going to be some some new kids and some growth there on the school and so i think we're going to see some of these things have an impact over the next five ten years that it's it's really going to continue to grow in north platte and we want to continue to make that investment um in the community are there some other things coming down the pipe here that uh, you're at a point that you can discuss other projects that you guys may be involved in? Uh, yeah, another great project that'll be, I think the groundbreaking set here for early October is, is out at the airport. It's going to be a unique building for the community of North Platte and, and really for any of the regional airports that any of us might have visited. I think a, a new passenger terminal, unique construction types, it's mass timber, which is probably the first of its kind in North Platte that I'm aware of. I don't know that there's any others. So what that is, is it's structural members that are comprised of multi-layers of wood, two by fours, two by sixes, all kind of laminated together to make a larger structural member. The roof structure will be made entirely of wood. They call it cross laminated construction. So it's like five layers of two by four material kind of stacked perpendicular to each other. And, and those panels then rest on the larger wood beams. So it'll be really unique. The inside will be all exposed wood, about 50% of the exterior is glass. So a little bit different than the current passenger terminal. Um, I know everybody likes the baggage slide, I think is what I'm going to call it currently. But uh, there actually will be a, a new baggage carousel to hopefully uh, expedite the uh, the pack pickup when you have a new arrival here. So it, it's going to be exciting great views of of the runway and planes coming in and going and so it'll be it's going to be really unique it's going to be great is that a remodel of the existing facility or is that a new building so we're going to leave the current building operational it's a trend here everybody likes to keep things going um but it'll actually be between the passenger terminal and kind of the private terminal there so that space that's in between them currently will be occupied with the new terminal some new parking lot uh, to the north so they will remain operational i don't think will have any impact on current air service or flights so that's a that's got to be a challenge in your world to try and what well, you mean you already referenced health care to try and keep because it's like what you do in construction is not always clean uh and in a healthcare environment i'm sure that's challenging but how how does that kind of when you try and i would imagine it slows it down some when you're trying to keep something operational and moving while trying to layer in new construction over the top of it it is. It's it's unique. I think we're fortunate to have a team, you know, really our entire team throughout the company is has we've we've done really well working in occupied campuses and we understand we're trying to understand each entity is separate, right? A hospital operates differently than a bank. But our goal is when we sit down early with an owner is to understand what your business is. What whatever entity in your industry that might be. Hospitals are unique, right? We're providing a clean, sterile environment, healthcare. The work that we're doing is the complete opposite, right? We're establishing dust and making debris. And and so what we like to do is, is we sit down very early and we establish a plan with the engineers and the architects and say, hey, look, we're going to bring an entire mechanical system offline. How do we do that in a space that needs X amount of airflow, mm-hmm. right? We just we just completed the lab. That was one of those that, that took months and months of preparation for us to leave them occupied in certain spaces down there on the first floor and, and at the same time construct what we needed to do. Um, I think that project took 18 phases. Some of them were about 10 by 10, but we would go in, you know, overnight or weekend and do what we needed to get the work done above the ceiling, get everything patched back so that Monday when patients were back, it looked like they were back in business. That's really um, remarkable. It's just extraordinary. You know, on the, on the airport project, I got to do a little quick shout out to um, Justin Gosnell at the airport, Sam prior to him, and the airport authority. You know, our airport authority here is separated from our city and county. It's a different group of elected officials. And our communities always believed in that, so we had a group of people that focused on the airport. Well, this group that focused on the airport, I think, got 90-some percent of this project paid for through federal funding. So this project has minimal taxpayer impact, and we are going to have an absolutely beautiful, modern regional air center, which hopefully is a key component to attracting 
new business and most importantly, quality air service for a long time. So I just had to pause for a minute, little shout out to the airport authority group, because you want to talk about hitting a home run. Um, to have all that federal money come into our community is just unbelievable. Yeah, thanks for addressing that, Ty, because it did cross my mind. I was curious what the impact of that facility will have on North Platte. So you answered that. Yeah, the nice thing is, like I said, the taxpayer impact, I don't remember, is 90-some percent paid, around 90 percent paid through federal funding. Does that sound right, Stuart? I think that's correct, yeah. Yeah, so they went out and got, you know, 20-some million dollars in federal grants. I mean, we're talking big money. And so we're going to probably have an oversized terminal for our size of community that's going to have very special architecture decorative features, which is what he was touching on, which you think about the look of an airport. Yeah, I mean, you could just go build a a concrete block building and have it look real simple like a warehouse or something. But think of the places you go and the way those airports look and what that tells you about that community when you arrive. Mm -hmm. You know, and you, you mentioned oversized, but I wanted to touch on that just briefly because almost without fail, every building project I've ever been associated with you get done, you move in, and within a sh- relatively short period of time, you go, I wish I'd have built that bigger. So I'm I'm glad they're overbuilding this just a little bit because I, I'm sure you see this all the time. Like, man, it, it, just get the extra square footage during now because 10 years from now, who knows? Yeah, we're going to need it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the new terminal will be uh, a completely different experience. I, I fly out of North Platte fairly frequently, and, and, and it's great. But it has its challenges just space-wise and kind of processing is how you go through the the check-in process. Is it, it functions, but it's tight. And so I think in the new one, it'll be very inviting, very com- comfortable. Um, I think from a process perspective, it's going to go much smoother. I don't know how much quicker it can go. It's got to be one of the fastest airports to get in and out of, honestly. But it's going to be absolutely great. And, and like Ty said, I think for people who are flying into North Platte for the first time, you know, to, to look at prospective business or meet with, you know, a, a possible developer or investor, I, I think it's going to make a big difference. That first view is just so important. What's yeah. the timeline of that project? I think it's 20 months or right around 20, 24 months for that one. Um, and you've started or? That one's going to start probably the first part of October, or the middle part of October. Okay. Yeah. So we're, we're waiting on some federal approval process, takes a little bit of time that, that is unique to airport and federal work. So we're in the process. We're getting really close to getting started out there. So I didn't even know about that project. I, I don't know where I've been, but that's exciting. Oh, it's a tremendous project. Yeah, it's yeah great. I think the public, everything's been so focused on the rec center and the Great Plains Health Campus that I think the community is just starting to get an inkling of, of how special and big this, this airline project is yeah. going to be. What do you see as the future for Samson out in this part of the world? I mean, you, it seems like you... Every time I turn around, you're in, and, and I didn't know you were doing the airport, so that's new to me today too. So, uh, where, where do you see where do you see yourself in five or ten years here? Well, really, our focus out of our Carney office, if you will, has been surrounding communities. Um, I think North Platte has a great future. I think the investments that are being made today are setting the stage for what's going to happen in five and ten years down the road. Obviously, sustainable beef has has made a huge impact. Currently, as it comes online, I think it's going to bring a lot new, a lot of new industry, a lot of new employers to North Platte, as well as the inland port. I think you know there's a lot of work yet to be done there, but I think the opportunity at the inland port is maybe unrestricted. I, I mean, I think two or three big entities there um, are going to have a huge impact just on the economics of North Platte and the surrounding area. That in turn kind of just feeds back into the school system and the hospitals and and all the other entities that rely on on customers and so that customer base increases and and i think we're going to see an increase across the board of all construction sectors so very good i'm glad to see these guys leading some of these big projects locally because you guys aren't afraid to work with north platte companies as subcontractors and maybe if you want to jump into that just a little bit yeah it's it's really important for us um the local tradespeople buy into the work, right? They want it to be really quality. Their kids might go to school or their families are going to the hospital or they're going to the bank. And and so that's probably the biggest importance. It's just the, the level of quality that they're willing to put forward. We're fortunate. We hire a lot of folks here locally to work on the projects in North Platte. I think currently we've got 15 employees who are, are either living in North Platte or based, you know, permanently in North Platte. And so 
that's a unique dynamic that we try to bring into all the communities that we work with, really. And, and that's what makes us successful. It, it, it gets hard to manage at times when you have employees spread over a 50-county you know, area of central and western Nebraska. But, but they understand that they may have to travel for a while in hopes, though, that they always get back to that community to build something in their community. North Platte's unique. They, they do have some very strong subcontractors, uh, a, a, a base of people who, who care about the community, who want to work, who want to do well, and, and are willing to, to grow to keep the community growing. Um, so I think it's had a good impact. I know they have the, the same struggles that we're having with hiring good employees, and those things take time. But I think you know, we're very open with them on what opportunities are coming up and, and encouraging them to grow and, and keep adding to their staff so that we can continue to grow with them. Very cool. Daniel, you've got a little family in construction. I do, yeah. My son um, is in construction. He did one year at UNK and decided college wasn't for him, so he came back and started um, just an independent contractor or construction company called Blackwood Construction Plug. So if you need a good remodeling hey, project, I teed up that plug I've for you because I, <laughs> yeah. I like him. I'm very impressed with him. He's yeah. a, he's, and I hear he does some really good work too. He, he really does. And that's unique. I think you know construction has that that opportunity for folks who who you know we heavily recruit at the high school level um and not necessarily those kids are going to come out of graduate high school and come work for us but it just seems like two or three years down the road we get these phone calls and these kids and they say hey you stopped by my high school a couple years ago and now you're in bassett right And, and and so it clicks down the road they went and got some experience maybe in the residential or as a subcontractor but it's that that image in town that they swap they stop by and, and say hey you know can we have a job and and so that's been really good for us I think um, the, the community college as well is a great opportunity for someone to go get a couple years of experience and go to work and those people have really unlimited opportunity at Samson to to be um, a project manager a superintendent whatever kind of pathway they want to take we have a lot of opportunity and sometimes that's the hardest part is people don't understand we have accountants Right. We have a we have a marketing department. I think we have six or seven people employed currently just on our marketing department. Mm-hmm. Um, the the technology is advancing so quickly we can hardly keep up. The tools that we have to scan buildings and the drones and the th- thermal management of a building after it's done and the, the ability to go in and see if there's an air leak or a water leak. Um, it takes a unique set of skills to to be able to manage and manipulate those systems to to get the information back out of them so i think that's an area that's going to continue to grow that's one of the areas that gets a lot of uh young people interested in construction but that's kind of where we're trending is we're we're always the last industry to, to get in line with the technology but we're finally doing that and catching up and so it's really exciting for us i think hershey's coming in a week or two to to visit here across the street they're the program reached out. They want to do a tour and spend a, a half a day or so here just visiting with our project managers and our superintendents and understanding, you know, what those roles and responsibilities are and, and where those opportunities for us. I did want to mention, I met with Stuart probably two years ago on the residential side. So we were looking at building. If anybody's been following the podcast for a while, they know I've had a long housing saga. <laughs> Ultimately, we decided... I think like a three-year saga. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ultimately, we did last year finally purchase a house and are very happy in our home. But I did want to just plug that of all the proposals that we received, I mean, Samson was so professional, so detailed, and really you guys thought of everything. Um, so I just think that even on the residential side, you really get high quality service and do you do a lot of residential are you mainly focused in commercial well well, thank you for that um we do have uh, a residential entity of samson construction and so we look for unique opportunities to to develop generally multiple homes kind of there's a little bit of a scalability you know in in the current market where if we can do 10 a year or 7 a year and they're still custom or semi-custom homes, very high quality. But that economy of scale helps us just keep the cost down. So we're always looking for opportunities throughout the state, really throughout the Midwest for those opportunities. And, and sometimes the right opportunities you know, come along. And, and we're going to pursue more of those here. I think the market's starting to to allow you know, for a little bit easier purchasing and um, – so we're going to we're going to have a heavy emphasis here in the next couple of years in central western Nebraska on the retail uh, on the the residential side. Hmm. 
housing's been so difficult from an economic standpoint. You know, it's been interesting because right at the time that North Platte is really needing housing, the national economics just with costs, interest rates, and all that have been been so challenging. And so that kind of spins us into talking banking for just a second. Um, Fudge, you want to talk a little bit about construction <laughs> construction here today? Danielle, do you want to go into our, our yeah. asking for a friend? So the asking for a friend, this is actually a question that I had when uh, Jared and I were looking to build because we just weren't sure how does construction financing work when or how does one secure funding for a project that's still in the blueprint stage? And I think that applies for residential or commercial projects. Yeah, and so n- normally what you would do um, is is uh, come in and, and talk about what you'd like to get accomplished, but then you work with your banker to to identify and kind of get a good estimate of what that project looks like, and then we would establish a, a line of credit where a construction line of credit where we could feed that project over a period of time, and then once the once the project was done, convert that into a, a permanent uh, mortgage, a more traditional. Uh, single family home mortgage. So that's kind of a reader's digest version of it. It gets a lot more intricate than that, but uh, uh, really it's uh, we're well tooled for that sort of thing around here. So what if it was a project that you wanted to pursue but it wasn't going to become your permanent residence? Ultimately you wanted to sell it or a developer or something like that. You know, we do all tor- all sorts of construction lending. We do for people who are going to live in things or second homes or investment property, commercial, residential, uh, mixed use, Stuart mentioned earlier, combinations of residential and commercial, um, whether that be a, a souse or a shop with headquarters or apartments that are sitting over the buckle. I mean, that is there's a lot of trending now towards towards mixed use type uh, type construction. I think one of the things that's mind-boggling to people with construction lending is well, wait a minute. If I don't have the asset, how do I put up collateral? In other words, okay, I'm bringing in a blueprint. Well, what's your collateral? Well, mm-hmm. that's a good question because there's a couple of different ways to look at it. First of all, if people have other assets, they can always use those. Like say they have their existing house. Maybe they use that as the collateral base for lending. But banks, um, especially ones like ours that do a lot of construction lending, are really adept at working with people to establish a value and then lending into the project as it's built. So, for example, they might have some down payment go into it, or they bought the land, or they utilize their existing home for some equity, and then they have that line of credit that David mentioned, and we actually estimate, okay, this is what we think the value of your project will be, and then every month when the contractor needs bills paid, we work through that line of credit to get them paid. So, yeah, we, we really pride ourselves on trying to be efficient cost-effective and collaborative with construction lending because that's what makes our communities grow. I mean, our bank is in three communities that are 20-some thousand people. Kearney's a little bigger in the 30s, and construction is the lifeblood of these communities growing, so it will always be a core objective. Um, Maybe put Stuart on the spot a little bit. If Samson's working with a customer or a construction lender, what do you guys like to see in a construction lender? I think it comes down to people that we know and trust. Right, and and an entity or a, a banking facility that that understands that construction process very well, and, and the ability to go in and meet with those people. Right, we have things that are unforeseen. We have things that differ from what the cash flow may be said initially. And so, if we need to go in and have that conversation with somebody who's understanding of the process and can work through that, you know, without a lot of challenge and, and very quickly, that's that's something that's always certainly a benefit when we meet with an owner and, and they let us know who that banking entity is. Some are you find out or are uh, you're more excited to work with than others very quickly. So um, we're going to try to stay on that list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It, it is very important. And, and I think, you know, here I predict, and, and I'm not an economist, but I do predict that things are going to continue, at least on the residential side, to, to get more affordable. You know, post-COVID, we've had a lot of cost increases, but those are really starting to level out. I think on the residential side, we've seen a little bit of a pause here lately with the interest rates, but as those start to kind of continue to come back down hopefully i think things are starting to fire back up on that residential development side and i think those opportunities are going to continue to kind of trend that direction here over the next few years very good Stuart. we can't thank you enough for for coming in today it's just it's a pleasure i we we really admire your company thank you for having me very much appreciate it we look forward to having you back someday <laughs> thanks well that wraps up our episode we hope you enjoyed learning about samson construction their pivotal role in building nebraska's future and some of those very unique and and paramount projects if you enjoyed this episode please hit subscribe 
Don't forget to share it with your friends. Don't forget to reach out to us with comments, feedback, or questions. Please visit our website, nebrasclanbank.com slash podcast. And of course, member FDIC.